Hi, John from Jones, and thank you for joining us. Today I'm going to be talking about our sweet and sparkling flight. We're going to do this one at a time, and after the first wine, we're going to give you a chance to pause your device, and you can enjoy the wine, take all the time you want. When you're ready, resume, and we'll go into the second wine, and again we'll pause and then get the final wine. So, uh, start with the first wine. We're starting with the Beacon Light, number eight, and uh, it's a wine that really, I think, was, in, was when they first produced it in 2011. People had come to the, the winery and said, you know, I'd like to try red wines, but I don't really like a dry, dry wine. And they went, you know, that's a good idea. And this wine was created. This wine is made with seven different grapes, all red grapes that uh, are grown here on the property. And they leave a little bit of sweetness. You're going to get some, some berry, so definitely some nice berry flavors, a little bit of spiciness. There's actually a good dose of Cabernet Franc in this one as well. But it's a, it's the kind of wine that, uh, it, as you, when you taste it, you'll see, it, uh, it's really quite versatile. You can use it a little chill on it, or you can do it warm. People in the also do a, a mold version of it. But uh, as you're pouring it, now I have water. You'll be having your own wine, I'm sure. But I always give it a good sniff, and you'll see. Oh yeah, a little bit of spiciness, a little berries pop out of there. I'll give you a taste. The first taste, I just prime my mouth. Whatever I had just before this can interfere with the flavor, so I like to have it a clear palate. When I taste, I move it all around my mouth to the back of the throat, the sides, the cheeks. And that way you activate the taste receptors that you have all over your mouth. They're not just on your tongue. And if you do that and swirl it around when you, after you swallow, you'll notice that you can keep tasting it for much longer than if you just take a very, very quick uh, a slug of it. And again, those, those berry flavors come out, a little bit of spiciness. And you can see it does have a hint of sweetness. We'd call this off-dry. It's not dessert-style uh, sweetness. And it uh, is the kind of wine that I would have this, again, with spicier foods. Uh, I once tried mala lamb with a dry wine, and it killed the wine. But with this, it really went well. So if you're having something that has a little bit of heat and you want a red wine, this is a great one for it. But again, I could have this with barbecue with some nice spicy wings some uh, some ribs uh, with some good uh, barbecue sauce uh, it's great on its own but uh, try it with those those sorts of foods and you may have noticed that the light on there and i won't give you the whole story but many years ago when planes wanted to uh, fly at night without instrumentation without instruments it was very difficult and so they came up with a series of beacon lights every 10 miles apart and they're kind of like uh, lighthouses for planes and the property where our grapes grow uh, the original owners had a beacon light there, and it was the eighth beacon. And so that's where the name comes from, is uh, beacon light number eight, which was on the property where the grapes are. So enjoy the wine, pause your uh, device when you're ready, and we'll come back whenever you want. Cheers. Welcome back. We're going to do wine number two, and that's first blush. And this is an interesting way because there's no grapes in it. It's uh, apples from Beardsley's Cider Mill right up the street. Uh, the pears are from Bishop's Orchards out in Guilford. And the blush comes from black currants, which are grown in Preston, Connecticut uh, at Maple Lane Farms. So it's 100% Connecticut grown, uh, but, but we don't grow those particular fruits here. And this is uh, very similar to our harvest time, which is apples and pears without the uh, black currants. But uh, the black currants add a little dimension, a little, little tartness to it. And uh, David, who is actually filming this right now, invented a drink where he mixed the Beacon Light with the first blush, and it makes a darn good sangria-like uh, taste. So if you ever have a bottle of each, give it a try. It's, it's really pretty interesting. So again, give it the swirl, and you're going to start getting some of the different components. You're going to start saying, oh, I do get some apples. And sometimes you dig in, you're going to get the pears, and uh, take your sip, move it around the mouth. And you'll see, it does have some sweetness to it, but it also has some tartness, which kind of balances it off. And again, I start thinking of foods. Now, my all-time favorite with this particular wine is General Tso's Chicken. But anything Asian, Thai, would be a great match for this. You could have this certainly by itself. But try it with something with just a little bit of heat. It's a, it's a wonderful wine uh, just to enjoy you know, on the deck or in the patio, but uh, it really can match up well with many kinds of foods, uh, especially if you like the spicy food. So uh, give it a try with some cheeses and uh, some, uh, some lighter foods, 
and it, it's a great way to go. So enjoy it while you're taking your time, and we'll see you back here for the strawberry. Welcome back again, and now we're on number three, our strawberry serenade. And this is a full-on sparkling wine, so when, if you would take one home and open it, remember, don't point it towards yourself or anyone else. Be very careful taking that top off because there's a lot of carbonation, and that pressure will drive that, uh, that cork right out. So be careful with that. So this particular wine is 65% uh, grapes and 35% Jones-grown strawberries. And uh, it's uh, now become our number one seller. It's, uh, it used to be Woodlands White, but now the uh, strawberry has overtaken it. And for good reason, it, it, when you open it and smell it, uh, it's, it's like a party in a bottle. It's a lower alcohol, about 9%. And it's, uh, I think, I call it stro uh, soda for adults. It's like strawberry soda for adults. So I still have my water in there, but it's, if you give it a bit of a swirl, give it the sniff, the strawberries jump out. You almost don't even have to swirl your glass for this. It's, it's really so uh, aromatic. And you can, you can really smell that strawberry. As it's, uh, it just brings you back to the fields of picking the berries. And take your sip. The carbonation is going to kind of like really explode in your mouth and they get the fizz and you get that really nice and you can see it's it's got some sweetness but it's not a super sweet wine it's not made to be that but it's a, a great wine for brunches many people do brunches with it's a great wine for celebrations you could easily have this with desserts for sure have some nice fruits uh, it's a, a great wine for that and there's something that you might want to try if you have a little bit of sorbet around pour a little glass of this put a little sorbet in there mix it up and it makes a like a kind of a creamy uh, a creamy drink that that's that's uh, fresh and bubbly and uh, it's just a very nice so uh, try to be creative with it you don't have to just have it straight think outside of the uh, the bottle there and uh, try it a few ways but it's a wonderful wine to have as a toast so uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon here and uh, enjoy the wine don't forget to take home your glass, and uh, thank you for supporting your local farmers. Cheers.